only in these activities, but also where we are sharing uh, the word. So um, now with that, I will request we um, look at our readings uh, this morning. Na tunazungumzia kuhusu uh, physical uh, wellness. But before that, may we bow in a word of prayer. Our Father and our Lord, we are grateful for who you are, a mighty and everlasting God. We ask that you may get to guide us uh, this morning as you go through your word. We pray that, Lord, you may get to uh, encourage us. Uh, you may get to comfort us even as we look at uh, the burdens that really weigh us down. We pray that uh, may these words come heavily in us. And if at all, uh, kuna mahali ambapo tutasikia tumeguzwa, we pray that, Lord, we may change and yield to the demands of you, O oh God. For this we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> now, just to remind us, this month we began very well. Uh, uh, health Board uh, started us with the topic, Jehovah Restores My Health. And after that, we looked at mental wellness. Last Sunday, we looked at uh, emotional wellness. And today, we look at uh, physical wellness. We have had our three readings called to worship from uh, that John 1 verse 4. And from the book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 7 and 8. And again in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 through uh, 10. Now, I will focus on uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 12, 1 uh, through 10, even as we think through our physical wellness and how it is affected by the thorn that is, you know, in us. I will start by mentioning that one of the reasons why true Christianity has been distorted, or why, or maybe better to put it this way, why the fake Christianity or prosperity gospel is selling so much, it's because it has been distorted to sell a different gospel. If people are asked here, and maybe I can do that survey, how many enjoy suffering? How many enjoy suffering? You see, very few hands are up. And another question, how many people think that we benefit from suffering? Again, few hands. Uh, but the reality is, when we understand the teaching and theology of suffering, we glorify God even more. So today we'll look at uh, the famous uh, quote of Paul, when he says that my grace is when, when uh, Paul tells uh, when Christ tells Paul that my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made uh, perfect, and then Paul responds by saying that I am more content in this. So, um, verse nine will not really be a good selling book. Kowale ambao anapenda kusoma a book that that sells on suffering, a book that, or a portion that promises that suffering will be part and parcel of you. Because that is not something that uh, most of us really appreciate. Because what the market wants is to escape from weaknesses. That is what we want. We want to escape from the power of weaknesses. And you know, to feed that need, then the gospel has to be distorted and then you have to be preached those nice things that your better life now, I mean, come and receive your healing. You get that? See, those are some of the um, conventions that we see. Some of the things that what I mean, you spend your money because you've had Apostle Flanny and Flanny somewhere, and maybe you think he or she can heal that cathon in you, but that is not what the true gospel, you know, really uh, says. And when the gospel is distorted, one thing or two things happen is that the truth of the message is lost. The very time you dislike that portion 
that tells you that suffering is part of you as a Christian, you miss the message because at times the Lord does not use him greatly whom he has not hurt greatly. Praise be to the Lord. You miss the, um, the growth or the lessons that the Lord intends you to gain through persecution. And of course, you fail to meet the deepest need that comes with suffering. So now, uh, what I want to do, I want to lay open this text so that we may see uh, what there is for us, and I will do it in three questions. Uh, and that is the question about Christian weakness. And you need to, to note, I'm not talking about wickedness, I'm talking about weakness. Praise be to the Lord. So now, we will ask ourselves three, <coughs> these three questions. What are the weaknesses that Paul has in mind when he says the power of Christ is made perfect in my weakness? So what are the weaknesses that Paul has in mind when he says the power of Christ is made perfect in weaknesses? The next question, number two, that we'll ask ourselves, what is the source of such weakness? What is the source of such weakness? Do they come from Satan or from God or both? And the third question that we'll ask ourselves is, what is the purpose of such weakness? What is the purpose of such weakness? Is there a goal or an aim for why I must suffer? Is there a reason why I must face persecution? Now, I am asking these questions not only because they are the questions asked in this portion, but also they are necessary questions for you to understand so that you can endure hardships in joy. Praise be to the Lord. So the first question, what weaknesses? What are the weaknesses Paul has in mind here when he quotes Jesus as in verse 9 saying, my power is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul says, I will all the more gladly boast in my weaknesses. What are these weaknesses that Paul is ready to boast in them? Four words, especially in verse 10, really help us understand what these weaknesses are. One, in verse 10 we read that I am content with weakness in insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. I think it is very important we get to understand what these uh, things are. One, insults. And you know, these are circumstances forced upon you these are reversal fortunes against your own will. Something that you forced against you. You know, um, let me put it well. Insults, when people think of clever ways of making your faith or your lifestyle or your words as a Christian to look stupid or weird, you know, when someone says, Watch at one who walk of wanki to ampeleka wapi. Let us see who you mung waki muakua kutoko kuhaya madeni. These are insults, are they not? We have hardships mentioned by Paul. And hardships are circumstances that are forced against you, are forced over you against your will. These are things laid upon you. I mean, these are things that maybe you don't even have a reversal way to turn them. And you know, this could refer to any situation where you feel trapped. You didn't plan it or think it will work this way. Maybe you found yourself taking a loan and things took a different path. Now you are struggling with him. It was not your wish. You caught a disease. You started maybe working in that company. 
and your health was severely affected. You found yourself in that accident. You know, you find yourself working with people that force things on you because maybe you are a junior. I mean, there are hardships pressed on you. You may be a Christian, it may be in church, and there are people who are disregarding you, who are looking down on you. People who maybe tell you, Bona asifiwe, nakule chini wanakukula. These are hardships. And at times as a Christian, you have nothing that you can do. You may be a deacon and you're struggling with the people that you are, you know, working with. These are circumstances or hardships forced upon you. We have persecutions, as Paul put it. And you know, persecution are wounds or abuse or painful circumstances or acts of exploitation by the world. And you know, these can be from people that you call brothers or brethren, people that you call fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. I mean, they affect your overall Christian moral commitment. This is the time, you know, persecution, it is the time when you are not treated fairly. It is the time when you look and when, when you assess the whole situation, this is but malice. When someone sees you growing, you are such a darling. But when they see you growing, even in church, they push you to the corner. And then you have the fourth one, that is calamities. And maybe calamities, like I had said, may be something that came upon you. I mean, accidents and all these other things that you cannot run away from. These are the things that Paul is describing as a thorn in the flesh. Now, I will also want to re-emphasize again that you are not going through this because of your sin. You're not going through this because of your behavior. And Paul is actually making it very clear that this is not because of wickedness. It is just a weakness that you cannot control. It is not a weakness. He's not talking about lust. He's not talking about uh, overreacting. He's not talking about bad choices that we make. Paul is actually not saying that the power of Christ is perfect in my choices. Or he's not saying I will be more gladly boast in my bad choices. Because weaknesses here are not in perfect behaviors. So therefore, do not look at yourself and think it is because of uh, my immoral, you know, ABCD, that is why I'm going through this. Now, this portion is actually talking about things that are pressed to us against our will. Things that are not necessarily as a result of our own sins. Yes, we know we go through hardships because of what Adam and Eve did, but this context is different from that. So the question is, what these weaknesses are? Zuko VP, I have said there are circumstances and situations and experiences and wounds that make us look weak. Things we will probably get rid of if we had the human strength. I mean, there is a place where you have been placed but that place keep on giving you wounds day after day. You look weak before the eyes of men. You may not have a recognized title and in a way that may be a weakness to people and may use that against you. Have you seen people 
whom you are, maybe was, alikuwa chini yako, but once they are given power, they turn all around because of the title. You are maybe the same in terms of uh, as employee, but amepatio a position. And then they change and use that to inflict on you because your weakness is not just having. Your weakness is only that you're not having a position as they, uh, as they have. And you know, these are weaknesses that we say, if we were strong, we might return the insult with such an effective way that the enemy might feel. We might say that if we were strong, we might take charge of our own fortune and turn back the emerging hardship. If we were strong, I mean, these are weaknesses you say that I will turn things around. These are the persecutions or hardships that you say, if I was strong, I might turn back the persecution so quickly, so decisively, that no one will mess with me again. Ali nifutia kazi, na mi nitapata na mtoto wake nitamuaribia kazi. Unasema, I mean, these are witnesses, unasema, vile ambavyo amenifanya, nitafanya vivyo. You see, these are weaknesses that you say that if you are strong, you may use the resources around you to prevent calamities. I mean, to live well, to avoid sicknesses and all that. But in reality, we don't usually have that kind of human strength. And at times, even when we have the capability to embarrass our enemies, We as Christians aren't called to revenge. We as Christians aren't called to respond as the world responds. Paul said in, I mean, in Matthew 5:38 through 42, Jesus says that do not return evil for evil. In 1 Corinthians 4, 12 through 13, this is what Paul says encourages us to do. When reviled, we bless. When you are cast, you bless. When you are persecuted, you endure. When you are slandered, try to reconciliate. And then he adds, you know we have become like the, ref the refuse of the world. We have come like that rejected thing. But you know, Paul is saying all these things to encourage you and me. And therefore, the answer to our first question, weaknesses are not sins, but experiences and situations or circumstances and wounds that are difficult for us to remove by ourselves. So the next question we'll be asking ourselves is, where do these weaknesses come from? Where do these weaknesses come from? I have said there are weaknesses that you cannot at times refuse. They are pressed on you. Okay? You, you clearly see that this person is out there to finish me. Okay? That this job, this situation is actually brought to put me down. But Paul is calling you to say that do not focus on that weakness, but focus on the grace of God. Praise be to the Lord. Focus on the grace of God. I mean, if you are careful on the prayer that was uh, done during the intercessory, he would say about the grace of the Lord. Mahali ambapo ametutoa. As if to say, that grace is active in the presence of your enemies. Look at Psalm 23, when the writer says that he prepares a table in the presence of He's telling you, friends, do not focus on the enemy, rather focus on the grace that sustains you in the presence of your enemy. Praise be to the Lord. Yes, 
Wacha waendelee kuongea, let them continue wacha waendelee kujipanga na kukupangia, but focus on the grace of God that frustrates them day and night. So where does this weakness come from? Paul talks about a thorn in the flesh. And I will have it as an example, you know, for us from verses 1 through 4. Paul talks about the things that he could be able to see in visions. How he had been, you know, uplifted. I mean, the level that he was in. But he says that, I mean, he has all the reason to boast. He has all the reason to see himself well elated above the rest. But he acknowledges the thorn that will actually make him not to see the pride in him. Praise be to the Lord. And you see, we are told that he prayed three times for the thorn to be removed. I mean, he, we are being told, encouraged, it is not wrong to go before the Lord and tell him that Lord, na sinyua na mtuflani, na sinyua na kituflani, it is not wrong to say that. But then, the Lord encourages us and tells you, stop wasting and spending so much time on the negative energy. Spend, I mean, focus on the grace of God that makes even more comfortable in the face of persecution, in the face of troubles and weaknesses. Praise be to the Lord. Now, this thorn, people argue, what kind of thorn was in Paul? So this thorn in the flesh, it may have been a physical problem or it may have been some rentless enemies. This is one of the problems or thorns that Paul is talking about. And we know it very clearly because we can see him honestly praying for, his, for it. But I love the response that is given by Christ that my power is made perfect in weakness. And where is it from? The scripture says, verse 7, it is a messenger from Satan. You know, Satan is the one at work as far as injecting the pain is concerned. But I must remind us, the scripture is open and clear, that it is not only the force of Satan active, but also the force of God. You know, it is the work of God to save. Of course, we know the reason why Satan will press on that thorn is so that he can discourage this man of God, is so that he can have this man of God lose sight, is that this man of God may lose their focus and the call by which he has been called. But the work of God is to save even through that. And we really need to know the truth of God's sovereign grace, the truth of God's powerful grace, unmatchable grace. You know, many other times I love using it as a greeting as Paul does in the Bible that grace be to you. That is a very strong statement. And when I tell someone grace be to you, I also apply to myself that grace be to me. You know, it is a very comforting statement knowing that the grace of God is sovereign. It cannot be overcome by evil forces. It cannot be overcome by the enemies that are marching against you. So the answer to the same question is that the source of our weakness may sometimes be certain and is at times destructive or made to destroy us. But always our weakness are designed by God for our good. That your weakness 
the Lord will use it for your own good. And this is why the truth of God's sovereign grace is so precious in the midst of hardships and calamities. I will repeat that again. God's sovereign grace is so precious to you. You cannot take advantage of it. You cannot ignore it in the face of calamity. I mean, whenever you are going through stuff, remember, he says that my grace is sufficient for you. I, I look at Paul when he's in prison and people are, you know, so sorry for him and he looks at them and he's actually sorry for them because they wonder, how will you continue with the gospel with this weakness? Already you have been put in cell, uko gerezani, and your enemies have mastered their strength against you. How will the church continue? And he writes them, he writes and tells them, oh, I can do all things, even in my weakness, through him who gives me strength. So, usiangalia upungufu wangu and think that I will not be able to do what the Lord allotted me to do because I will do it whether the devil liked it or not. Whether your enemies like it or not, you are, will achieve that godly and ordained purpose. That ordained goal, that which you are called to do, you will do no matter what. The evil the force of the evil looks like you will attain it because you have the power of God in you. That don't cry of me. I mean, you may be there and people are wondering, people are wondering, will you be able to bring these children up? You can tell them that whatever I need to do, whatever I need to do, uh, to do for them to grow, to learn and be purposeful people, I will do it through him who gives me strength. Look not at my weakness. Praise be to the Lord. So, I have said the reason for this weakness, Satan's reason is to put you down. God's reason is to humble you. Praise be to the Lord. It is to humble you so that you may not focus on your strength, but focus on him who gives you strength. And one other thing, one of the other reasons is that God's purpose for the calamities and the hardships we go through is so that he can glorify himself. Now, I want to ask this question again. Did you need to VP? You know, I asked, who will enjoy hardship? And hands were down. So I want to ask it in a more biblical manner. Who will appreciate hardship for the glory of God? That's it. You know, when we preach these things, I mean, I've had people tell me there that I, am, I have brainwashed young kids, a young, the youth, because we are teaching them the theology of suffering and accepting things as they are. And, and, I, and I'm like, the truth, the truth needs to be open. I mean, very few will accept messages zamazishi na kifo kwa sababu we don't want that. Hatutaki kusikia negative things, but we want heaven, don't we? We want heaven. Sinukweli. Now, you want to grow, you must endure hardship. I'm not saying that it is a must, dukayako ibiwe, so that you grow, but at times, through hiyo kuibiwa, you grow, don't you? You learn lessons. So, kumalizia, nimesema the reason one is Satan. The reason for Satan is to really put you down. But God's reason for um, our suffering is so that we may be humbled. And number two, for God, is that he may be glorified. You know, as a human being, the deepest need 
that you and I will want from weakness is what you call quick relief. But the well-grounded confidence for a person who endures suffering comes from knowing the word of God and its demands. I liked when Dr. Lovu preached here and said and gave an illustration of a person that covered water in all the people. That person looked and said that no one could have endured the hardship, the harshness of cancer like that person. So you look at your neighbors and say that maybe no one could have gone through this hardship, this sickness that I am going through. Now coming to a close, I want to give a story that is told of a man who was asked by God to push a rock. So he started pushing the rock every day. And every time he pushed, the rock will not move. Um, he started feeding very well so that he can master strength for the rock to move. He stopped wasting his time in the market so that he could have more time while pushing. He started looking for wise people to advise him on how to make an object move. He started waking up very early in the morning, unlike the former days, so that uh, he can uh, move the rock. And one day he got so frustrated and went before the Lord and asked him, why did you give me an object that is immovable? And this is what the Lord told him, that I did not ask you to move the rock, I asked you to push. Since you started pushing, see how you have become rough and tough. See how you've become wise by consulting wise men. See how you have your bodies healthy because of feeding well. So friends, let us not so much pray for the thorn to be removed, but the grace of God may be sufficient even in our weakness. Shall we pray? Our Father and our Lord, we are thankful for these hard truths that are difficult at times to simmer in us. We pray that your Holy Spirit may continue convincing us to accept some of the difficulties you allow them to come along our way for our own edification and even for your glory. May we be objects of your glory even in our suffering. For this we ask in the name of God the Father, the Son, and that of the Holy Spirit.